You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Sonic Summer Stock Playhouse. Good night to be indoors, Maurice. Evening, sir. Yeah. Mm. Right, so best hang this in the cloakroom. Uh, yep, no, thank you very much. Yes. Oh. All right. Halifax is turning its shores to the lands tonight as the streets are absolutely festooned with puddles and rainwater is showering down the rain pipes. But never you mind. We are well warm and dry here in the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse and ready to escape with another fine performance. Yep. Time to make my way inside. It's a good thing I had all those seat warmers installed. You wouldn't think so after last week. It was absolutely baking. And yeah, oh, the theatre is full again tonight. And if you think it's because of the weather, think again. Tonight, Narada Radio Company returns for another performance. Yes, Pete Lutz and his Narada players have worked so hard this season to bring such a great variety of performances to the stage. Tonight is no exception and it's a lot of fun. I know Escape happens to be one of Jack's most favourite of series, and I do hope he'll have some time to enjoy the performance, seeing as he's behind managing in the wings. This week's recreation episode is The Adaptive Ultimate, and... (coughs) Here comes Pete Lutz to tell us all about the play. Enjoy! Welcome, friends, to the third of four special presentations from the Narada Radio Company for the 2018 Sonic Summerstock. My name is Pete Lutz, and I hope you have enjoyed our earlier releases this season, as well as the other fine entries in this year's lineup. What we present this time is one of my favorite episodes of the Escape radio series, The Adaptive Ultimate, originally broadcast on NBC on March 26, 1949. Escape was an anthology series like no other. Every week gave you a half hour of high adventure, but it didn't restrict itself to a specific genre. From week to week, you might find yourself on a 19th century warship, behind enemy lines in Germany, on a rancho in Old Mexico, on a rocket to a distant world, or even in the present day, but mired in a situation almost impossible to escape. (laughs) See what I did there? Our program tonight is no exception. It's science fiction, but it takes place on good old Earth, and it could be happening somewhere right now. So listen and enjoy the adaptive ultimate from Escape. Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Transcribed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure! You are standing outside a room, horror gripping you, while before your eyes, seen through the transom window, the most beautiful girl in the world is about to die. Because of you. Today we escape from reality with a fascinating story of a girl who lived a weird second life. As John Jessel told it in his gripping story, The Adaptive Ultimate. No, Daniel, I can't do it. You have a very interesting theory. It's more than a theory, Dr. Bach. I've proved it. It works. I tried my serum on tubercular guinea pigs and it cured them. 
They adapted themselves to the tubercular bacillus and lived. Mm -hmm. I tried my serum on a dog with rabies. He adapted himself too. I tried it on a cat with a broken spine. The cat instantly adapted itself to its injury so that the spine had time to knit and heal. Don't you see what a tremendous discovery this is? Yes, perhaps. But think what that would mean in accident cases. There'd be no further need for emergency surgery. Don't you see that? Huh. No matter what the condition, the injury to the body, a mere injection of my serum would permit the patient instantly to adapt himself to his condition and live. No matter what is injury? Exactly. A serum made from insects. From a common fruit fly, the most adaptable of living organisms. Tear off a wing and it grows a new one. Tear off its head even. Stick on a new head. And that too will adhere in time. Think of imparting that same adaptability to human beings. (laughs) To grow new heads, it has merit. Oh now please, Dr. Bach. All right, all right. No, seriously. I know this may be a great thing, but to permit you to experiment on the human being... The most hopeless case you can find, Dr. Bach. Someone already doomed. Well, if someday I discover in the hospital a hopeless case, understand it will be hopeless. I understand. And if the patient shall consent, then you will have your human guinea pig. Well, Dr. Scott, you requisition for yourself a hopeless case. Permit me. Here is your guinea pig. What is it, Dr. Buck? TB? Yeah, final stage. A matter of hours at most. Hmm, she might have been attractive once, but now, hair like string, skinny like a skeleton, and flesh like wax. Dr. Buck, you call this a fair test? I said hopeless, but I didn't say a corpse. The lady is returning to life, such as it is. Well, Dr. Scott, I regret I have not a more palatable subject for your experiment, but this is what I promised, a hopeless case. It's all right, I'll try it. Oh, what's her name? Well, let me see. It's on the chart here. Zealous. What was that? Her name is Kira Zealous. Oh. Young lady. Uh, hmm? Permit me. I am Dr. Herman Bach, chief of the staff, and I would like to introduce one of our promising young doctors. Uh, he, he wants a, a date, I suppose. Miss Zealous. Mm, hello, brown eyes. What? Your eyes. Your eyes are brown, aren't they? Miss Zalus, you see, I've perfected a serum. I like brown eyes. <laughs> this, uh... This serum might help you, but it has never been tried on a human being before. And... Well... I thought if you have no objection... What are the odds? Odds? Well... Actually, you've got everything to gain. And nothing to lose. Well... How right you are. Okay. I'm all yours, brown eyes. Go ahead. Experiment away. Dr. Buck, prepare her arm. Twenty-four hours and she is yet alive. I would have said yesterday it would be impossible she should survive the night. So it is now 48 hours and she actually seems better. But miracles such as this have happened before and without serum. A week and still she lives. Each day she becomes better. It is miraculous. The spots on her lungs are disappearing. Her coughing has stopped. There was no sign of bacillus in the culture. But even more amazing, her reaction to abrasion, skin punctures. Yesterday I took a blood specimen. Before I had one cc, the puncture in her skin had closed. Yes, in 30 seconds. The ordinary person, it takes a day, two days for it to heal. With Miss Kira Zellis, 
30 seconds. It is amazing. Dan, I will not dispute it. Your serum has worked a miracle. She is cured. And now I must discharge her from the hospital. But... Well, Dr. Bach, I... You had forgotten that time must come sometime, hmm? But, you see, I must. She is cured and we need the room. Well, yes. Yes, I know. But, well... Well, she should be under observation. We don't know what effects will show up. I think, Daniel, you have an extraordinary interest in Miss Ellis. So I have asked you to come here. She is outside. Shall we invite her in? Why, yes, of course. Send in Miss Ellis, please. Now, observe well your miracle. Ah, Miss Ellis. Come in, come in, sit down. Thanks. Oh, hello, brown eyes. Hello, Kira. I have sent for you, Miss Ellis, because I have good news. Today I am discharging you from the hospital. Oh? Yeah, today you are free to go. That pleases you? Madly. Kira, you have people, perhaps? A family? Aren't we all brothers and sisters? Under the skin? Miss Ellis, I will come to the point. I wish to make you a proposition. I mean purely a scientific proposition. Yes, I know. An experiment. Precisely. We are interested, Dr. Scott and I, to observe the further effects of the serum he gave you. Yes? I will pay you board and room and $30 a week. You will live at my house. I have a housekeeper, Mrs. Getz. She will look after you. Is that satisfactory? Wouldn't I be a fool to say no? Excellent, excellent. Does, uh, Brown Eyes live there too? No, but Dr. Scott will continue to have a clinical interest in the experiment, Miss Ellis. Have no fear. Good. Yes. Well, it is now almost time for dinner. I will take you, Miss Ellis. You will join us, Dr. Scott? Why, yes. Fine, Dr. Buck. Very well. Shall we meet outside in, what, uh, ten minutes? That'll do me nicely. Miss Ellis, you wish to wait here or maybe outside? A little fresh air? I think I could use a little fresh air. Good. There's a little park across the street. You will find benches there to rest. We will meet at the front entrance in ten minutes. Dr. Dr. Bach, what is it? What's the matter? Some sort of commotion across the street in the park. Where is Kira? Well, I... I thought she'd be here with you. Perhaps she is still over there in the park. What do you suppose? Come on! Dr. Bach, it is Kira! Kira! Let us through, please. Kira! Let us through, please! Officer, what's happened? What is this? Why are you holding this lady? Do you know this woman? Yes, of course. What is it? What's the matter here? Plenty. Your lady friend here merely walks up to an old gent about 60 or so, picks up a nice hefty rock and beats his brains out. Officer, there must be some awful mistake. Yeah. Her mistake. Cold-blooded murder. Come on, sister. There's the wagon. But, officer, we- Uh, you better come along too, mister. Mona Lisa here don't seem to be much in the mood for talking. And we'll need someone to tell the desk sergeant her name. Kira, this is terrible seeing you here like this. I... I've got to get you out of here. I've got to help you. Oh, jail's not so bad when you're here. Well, listen... Listen, this is all a terrible mistake. If you'll tell me what happened... Mistake? Why, why yes, of, of course, you... Kira, you... You didn't kill that man. If I said yes, what would you do? Why, why, I... I'd tell them you weren't responsible. I'd tell them all about the serum. I'd tell them that it was my fault that... That somehow the serum I gave you caused your mind to snap. Something that... That, that would be the only explanation. You'd do this? Ruin your career, no doubt. Just to save me. Well, yes, of course I would. And what would they do to me? I... Uh, I don't know exactly. 
put you away under observation? Something? Kira. Then my answer is no. I did not kill the man. Oh, don't worry. I won't be convicted. I'll take care of myself very well. I'll, as you say, adapt myself to the situation. All right now, Mr. Salvatore, continue. Tell the court in your own words precisely what happened. This old man that you see, he's a, he's a buyer of circus peanuts from me every day, for, for months, every day. And this one day he pulls out his uh, pocketbook. He's, he's a billfold. And I, I, I'm a look, it's a stuffer with the bills, the big money. He's a Salvatore. Can I make a change for $20? And <laughs> I'm a laugh. I must say, mister, I'm a peanut man. You take the peanuts, you pay me tomorrow. He said, thank you very much. He turned around, and then here is this dame, and, and she pick up a... Oh, it's, a, it's a, like a bigger stone, and, and, and it conks him. It's, it's a murder. I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Continue, Mr. Salvatore. Oh, should, should, should it not be more to say, this is them. She, she bend over, and, and she, she reach in his pocket to take the money. I, I'm a grab her. People will come. P police will come. Mr. Salvatore, can you describe this young lady to us? Oh, oh see, I, I, I remember her very well. She's a, she's a skinny. She, she ain't no beauty, you know. She got the black suit. Uh, the, 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 the brown hair, uh, uh, the eyes, uh, the, 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 don't know, uh, the, the dark, you, you know, maybe, maybe brown or blue. Thank you, Mr. Salvatore. Your witness. <laughs> Mr. Salvatore. See? You say that the young lady, the assailant, had brown hair and dark eyes? Uh, see, brown hair, darker blue eyes. And do you see the young lady in the courtroom? Oh, oh see, she's a, she sit, uh, she, she sit uh, right. Oh. What's the matter, Mr. Salvatore? Are you pointing at Miss Zellis? See. Si. May I ask the defendant to rise, please? Miss Zellis, will you kindly remove your hat? Please. Mamma mia. Dr. Bach, look. Her hair, it's... It's become the color of aluminum. Your Honor, I submit that this defendant does not possess dark hair, nor, if you will observe, dark eyes. I am prepared, therefore, to submit a lock of her hair to be tested by any chemist the court may appoint to prove that the pigmentation is entirely natural. Now, Mr. Salvatore, do you still say that this is the young lady you saw in the park? I'm a, I'm a thinker she's is a... Is she? Mamma mia. No. Good Lord, Dr. Bach. That hair of hers, did you see it? It was the color of aluminum. She was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. And so she's been acquitted. They call her innocent. Daniel, I am a convert to your great principle of adaptability. But where will it end? You start with an ideal, and you wake up to discover you have created a monster. But she was acquitted. It was all a mistake. Do you really believe that? Park. Yes, Mrs. Getz. She is here, Doctor. She? That woman in the newspaper. Ah. Kira is here? You said she was so poor. Such a church mouse. Ah, you should see her. What do you mean, Mrs. Getz? <sighs> so fine, so great a lady. I'll, uh, I'll go and talk to her, Dr. Buck.
Hello, brown eyes. Hello, Kira. Aren't you glad to see me? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Well, congratulations on your acquittal today. We were there. I know. I sensed it. I was hurt that you didn't come up and congratulate me. Well, there were photographers and... Why? Why, Kira, your hair, it's... it's black again. Isn't it always? Don't you like it? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. It's... it's beautiful. Am I beautiful, brown eyes? Very, very beautiful. And are you happy to have me back? Oh, yes. Hmm. I always did like brown eyes. Kira. Tell me, how do you like my new clothes? My gown? Why, it's... it's very nice. Nice? It's exquisite. I have a whole new wardrobe. Hat, shoes, suits. But how, Kira? Where did you get the money? Money? You only had three dollars when you left the hospital. Oh. <laughs> so I did. Kira. Kira, you did take that wallet from the old man. Why, naturally. You... you... you did murder him. Certainly. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't look so shocked. Oh, I'm tired, brown eyes. You'll excuse me if I appropriate Dr. Bach's room. Good night. Dr. Bach, we've got to do something. Yes, Daniel, we do. I haven't slept a wink all night trying to think of what we can do. I've been here in the laboratory all night. I think I know. What? This serum of yours, it has accomplished a miracle. Yeah, it is the adaptive ultimate. Changes that take the ordinary person days or months, she accomplishes instantly. She walks into the sunlight, she is tan. She walks out, she is pale again. When she is in danger, she adapts. She could survive the electric chair, the hangman's noose. If she was in danger in the courtroom, she adapted. She changed her whole appearance, at will, so she could not be identified. Yes, I know, I know. You must not blame yourself. You could not know what you were creating. Now, this morning, I operated on one of your guinea pigs. I found this. The pineal gland hypertrophied. That is what causes it. Well, then, then maybe we can operate it, and maybe change her back. Yeah, but she could adapt to anything, anesthesia included. How can we operate unless we get her consent? Well, perhaps... No, you are dreaming, Daniel. Do you really think she will consent now? Now that she has power? Perhaps more power than any human being ever possessed before? Power for evil. And she has already killed one man, remember? But if we watched her, Doctor, kept her under guard... Again, Pygmalion falls in love with his Galatea. No, Daniel, no. She must be destroyed. We must perform surgery at once. Well, she'll die. She will go back to what she was, with but a few hours to live. It is best, Daniel. Yes, I suppose so. Yes? Yes, Mrs. Getz? Hmm? <sighs> Danke. What is it, Dr. Bach? And so perhaps she is also telepathic. She sensed what we were about to do, and now it is too late. What do you mean? Miss Zealous is gone. Disappeared. Dr. Bach, did you call for me? Well, Daniel, have you seen the evening paper yet? No, not yet. Then here. After two months, there is news of our Miss Kira Zellis. What? Let me see that. Where? Oh. The surprise of the evening was the appearance of John Callan, ambassador at large, diplomat extraordinary, the man slated to head the forthcoming World Atomic Energy Control Commission. Mr. Callan, one of Washington's confirmed bachelors, squired the 
the gorgeous Kira Zalus. You see, she has become gorgeous, our drab little urchin. Miss Zalus, the dazzling beauty who affects a dark wig by day and a white one at night. A great power of adaptability, courtesy of Dr. Daniel Scott. Dark by day, white by night. Well, what are we going to do, Doctor? Do? The World Atomic Energy Control, the one real hope of world peace. Kira isn't interested in peace. What can we do? Surgery, I know, but politics? We must wait and see how far your mad woman will go. Washington is agog with rumors about the romance between glamorous Kira Zalis and John Callan, the newly appointed head of the World Atomic Energy Control, one of the most powerful political figures on the globe. John Callan leaves tomorrow for the crucial atomic energy conferences at Geneva, Switzerland and sailing on the same boat as the exotic Miss Kira Zealous, with whom his name has been frequently linked. Rumor has it Miss Zealous acts as a sort of unofficial assistant to Mr. Callan, thus making her one of the most important women in the world. Glamorous, exotic, of such fragile stuff is world peace fashion these days, Daniel. I wonder what she intends to... Somebody calling at dinner time. Well, sit still, Dr. Bach. I'll see who it is. Yes, Kira. Hello, brown eyes. May I come in? Well, yes, of course. Oh-ho! Our exotic guinea pig, hmm? Good evening, Dr. Bach. I'm not intruding. Of course not. You're very kind. John and I... You've read about Mr. Callan? Oh, yes, yes. We're leaving for Europe tomorrow for the conferences in Switzerland. Yes. He had a series of meetings to attend to tonight, so I told him I would stay here. You're staying here? I took the liberty of saying you were my uncle, Dr. Bach. Oh. John will call for me in the morning on his way to the airport. We're leaving at eight. I do hope I'm not too late for dinner. Not at all. In fact, we're very happy to have you here. Aren't we, Dr. Scott? Kira. Hello, brown eyes. What are you doing out here in the garden? Waiting for you. You knew I'd follow you? Of course. Have you missed me? You know I have. Oh, Kira, listen to me. Do you love this John Callan? When I want love, I'll come to you, brown eyes. Well, then why? What is it? Money? Money? I don't need money anymore. What does an empress need with money? Empress? That's what you've made me. The most powerful woman the world has ever known. John Callan, he's supposed to be important. But in my hands, he's clay. To be modeled as I wish. Do you see what that means? Yes, I see. You hold the fate of the world in your hands. Exactly. To do with as I want. And I shall. Would you like to rule the world with me, brown eyes? Kira, you're evil. What is good? What is evil? Come here, brown eyes. Look at me and forget such things. Are you asleep, Dr. Buck? Sleep? Who can sleep? Kira's insane, Doctor. Do you know what she's planning to do? I heard. Oh, maybe. Maybe we can get to this Callan. And then what? Well, if we could talk to him. Tell him. Tell him? Tell him what? Didn't I talk to you? Would you listen? <sighs> Where is she? Oh, she's gone to sleep. I tell you, there's only one remedy. Surgery. It is the only hope, Daniel. But she'll never consent to surgery, Dr. Bach, and she's probably immune to anesthesia. Maybe not. Maybe not all anesthesia. What? Downstairs in my laboratory, I have a tank of ethyl chloride. Do you mean operate here? Tonight? Yeah, tonight. Right here, while she sleeps. Right, Dan. Now stop staring down at her. 
Pour the anesthesia onto the cone. Hurry. <sighs> that ought to be enough to anesthetize an elephant. Onto the face, quickly. All right. Dan, tightly, hold it close. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying. She, she's forcing my hands. I, I, I can't hold her. She's too strong. She, I, Fools. Did you think you could make me unconscious? You, you were going to operate on me. Is that what you were planning? Or were you going to slit my throat with that scalpel? Look! Kira, don't! <laughs> there! Do you see? I plunged your knife into my heart. I withdraw it. And the wound is healed. Now, go away, both of you. I want to sleep. John will be calling for me at eight. Half past five in the morning, two and a half hours more and she will leave, and the world will be one step nearer chaos. We are scientists, Dan. We have a responsibility to civilization. We must find a way to destroy this creature. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, of course. It's a fundamental biological law. No human can survive in its own waste product. Carbon dioxide is human waste. <sighs> Dr. Bach, if we could fill the room where she's sleeping with carbon dioxide, she'd become unconscious. You could operate him. Who are you calling? The hospital. I will have them send over two tanks of carbon dioxide. You think it should work, then? We must try anything. Hello, this is Dr. Bach. Let me talk to surgery. Hurry, it is an emergency. The tube is ready. You sealed the crack under the door? Yes. You close the window? Yes. All right, let us start the gas. Dan, through the transom above the bedroom door, you will be able to observe her reactions. You place the lighted candle inside the room? Yes, Doctor. You left the candle on the table. Observe it carefully. All right. When it goes out, your Miss Kira Zella should be unconscious. Dan, can you see inside the room from up there? Yes, Doctor. Candle is flickering, Doctor. Wait, no, it's still flickering. It, it's just gone out, Doctor. Excellent. It means there is now a concentration of 8 or 10% carbon dioxide. The average person would long since be dead. Doctor. Ya, yeah, Dan, what? Just a minute. Yes, yes. She's breathing much more quickly now. Convulsively. Uh-huh. Cheney Stokes breathing. She... She's opening her eyes now. What? She's... She's getting up. Getting up? She's... Staggering. Holding her throat, Doctor. She's gasping. She's... Yes? Moving toward the door. She's trying to unlock it. Zoe. Zoe. She's seen me. She's... She's trying to... Well? Well? Trying... What is it? She's collapsed. It's over. Yes? How do you do, Dr. Bach? I'm John Callan. John Callan! 
Why, yes, yes, of course. Come in. I haven't taken you away from anything. Oh, no, no. We were performing some surgery, my associate and I. I I have a miniature surgery here for emergencies, and we have just finished. Is that the patient on the table? Yeah, yes. Is she? Yes, she is dead. Too bad. Seedy-looking creature, wasn't she? She was uh, a charity case. Well, I, I won't keep you. Is uh, Kira here? No, she she changed her plans. She said there were some things she wished to do and she would meet you at the airport. <laughs> well, that's a woman's prerogative, isn't it? Changing plans? <laughs> yes. I'd better get a move on then. Nice to see you, Doctor. I, I hope we'll meet again when I return from Europe. Yes, that would be nice, Mr. Callan. And good luck on your mission. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Well, Daniel, maybe we will get some sleep now, hmm? Dan? Huh? Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, Doctor. I... I was daydreaming. She's lovely, isn't she? Lovely? Yeah, Dan, lovely. May she always be in your memory. Escape is produced and directed by Pete Lutz. Today we have presented Transcribe, the Adaptive Ultimate, by John Jessel. Adapted for radio by Chet Spurgeon and Herb Futran, with editorial supervision by John Dunkel. Starring Pete Lutz as Dr. Bach and Gabe Templin as Dan Scott. Featured in the cast were Rachel Craig, Will Snyder, Austin Beach, Jack Ward, Boyd Barrett, Scott Phillips, M.J. Cogburn, Jeremy Hennessy, Drew Prophet, and Mike Jensen. Music performed by Dr. Ross Bernhardt. Next week, you are trapped in a dark, empty house, a girl lying dead at your feet, and surrounding you, closing in on you, are the band of killers, deadly enemies of your country and yourself, and they are intent on murdering you. Next week, we escape with the famous story, Confidential Agent by Graham Greene. Be sure to tune in at the same time next week when, once again, we offer you Escape. This is Orlando Segarra speaking for EAN, the Empire Audio Network. Thunderous applause and another successful night here at the Playhouse. Our thanks to Mr. Pete Lutz and the Narada Radio Company players for their performance of this classic Escape episode. For me, I'll be taking the trolley back home, and like you, I'll be looking forward to next week's performance at the Sonic Playhouse with the return of another great company on the stage. But until then, I'm David Alt. Thank you all, and good night. And that's this week's performance for the 2018 Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, performances, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their copyright holders, and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society podcast and Electric Vicuna Productions. Any shows that continue their run must have explicit permission from all parties involved. The Playhouse theme was written and performed by Sharon B. Join us next week at the Playhouse for another classic performance. I am your announcer, David Alt. Good night.
This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen. The demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. Mm-hmm.